Hello, in this video I'll be analysing the data obtained for the Boyle's Law experiment. If you haven't seen the video yet, check out the video, the link is in the description so you can see how the data was collected and the apparatus I was using. I'll be using this spreadsheet to analyse the data. If you want to have a go at the data analysis yourself, I highly recommend that you do. I've created a worksheet that will guide you through the process of doing so and I've started doing that for all of my experiment videos where I'm collecting data that can be analysed. So do have a look at that, have a go yourself. The, the worksheet is free and also the spreadsheet that I'll be using here, you can download that for free as well. The link is in the description. So to begin with, we'll put data for our volume measurements into this table here for the corresponding pressures over here. So the pressure was the independent variable that we set and for each of those we measured the volume of the gas. Over here, we'll do some calculations where we are investigating to determine what is the relationship between pressure and volume for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature. Are pressure and volume directly proportional or inversely proportional? So that this table here will calculate so that we can determine whether they are directly proportional and this will calculate so that we can determine whether they are inversely proportional. And then we've got some graphs that we can use to hopefully corroborate our findings. So let's have a look at putting the data in. Uh, the, you'll notice that I'm putting the pressure and volume in in the units that I measured in, kilopascals and millilitres respectively. We don't need to do any conversions because we'll just be multiplying by some factor each of the pressure and volumes and those can actually be incorporated into just a new proportionality constant. So because that's our aim, we're trying to just determine whether there is a proportional or inversely proportional relationship, we don't need to do that conversion. If, however, we had a way of determining the number of moles of gas and we measured the temperature and we wanted to find out something like the molar gas constant, which we could potentially find out, then we would need to do unit conversions. But because we're not doing that, this is fine. Right, so let's put the volume measurements in and see what happens. So we've got 34.5, 28, 24, 21, 19, and 17. Okay, so those are our volume measurements there. So all I'm doing is inputting numbers here. And you can see that as I put those numbers in, the values in these tables calculated, and you can see the top of the graph plotting there. So, if pressure and volume are directly proportional, then that means they would be related by a constant of the form, so if we, we're doing pressure divided by volume here, so the relationship for a directly proportional relationship is pressure equals a constant multiplied by the volume. So what we want to do is, if we can measure that constant for each of the measured values of pressure and volume, and if it's the same value each time, then it's actually a constant, that means that our data would be directly proportional. So P equals some constant times V. If we rearrange that for the constant, it would be pressure divided by the volume. So that's what I've done here, pressure divided by volume in this column. And you can see that all I'm doing is pressure there divided by the volume there. Okay, and that will update for the corresponding pressure and volume rows here. And as we look at this data, we can see that those values are clearly going up. And that's what we're looking for. Are the data point, are these calculated values clearly going up, clearly going down? In which case the test is failed. It means that they are not directly proportional because these are clearly not constant. With real data, you have to bear in mind that there is some randomness with the data and therefore you won't get exactly the same value each time. You're looking to see, is it roughly the same? But when it's clearly going up or clearly going down, then you know the test has failed. All right, let's look at the inverse proportionality table over here. So here I've calculated pressure times volume. So if you have an inversely proportional relationship, then pressure would be equal to some constant divided by the volume. So if you rearrange that, that'd be pressure times volume is equal to the constant. So we're looking for all these values to be the same. And you can see that all these ones here so, uh, yeah, I'm doing pressure times volume, as you might have understood already. Yeah, so these values here, these are all 
3.6 to two, two significant figures. Uh, they're all very close. This is a bit of an anomaly. This value is quite higher than the rest, 3.8. Not, not by vast amount, um, but I would say on the basis of it, that is a good indicator that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. As Boyle's Law says, that since we already know it, Boyle's Law says that pressure is inversely proportional to volume for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature. And our test here matches with that. So it's supporting that. Okay, let's look at some other ways that we can check whether it looks inversely proportional. It's always a good idea to plot some graphs. So here it is pressure versus volume. I've got volume on the y-axis, pressure on the x-axis. doesn't matter which way around you do it because uh, you should, if they are inversely proportional, you should still be able to see that from the graph. And we are getting a curve. A 1 over x graph does actually look like a curve like that, of that, that shape. But obviously I've got a false origin here. It's a bit, perhaps a bit harder to see. But I've plotted the equation for our curve of best fit here. And you can see that y, which is volume, and x, which is pressure, they are related through a relationship of nearly volume to the power of minus one. So this is minus 1.1. So pressure, sorry, so volume equals some constant times pressure to the power of minus 1.1. So that's actually pretty close. That reinforces our understanding that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So that's a good indicator. As you know, in physics, we like to plot straight line graphs where we can, because then we can investigate the gradient and the y intercept and better understand our data. So what I did to create this graph is I, I've created a new table where I've got the pressures as before, and then I've calculated volume to the power of minus one. So pressure, and if pressure and volume are inversely proportional, then pressure will be directly proportional to volume to the power of minus one, because that's the same thing. So if we plot these, we should expect to see that we get a straight line. And yes, we do. We get a straight line. You can see that's forming a quite a nice straight line there. And I've drawn a line of best fit, and this is the equation of that line. What we're interested in here is the y-intercept. So we can see we've got a straight line. Does it go through the origin? Well, 0 0.0028 is a very small number, well, is a small number given the scale that we're operating at here. So I'd say that's close to going through the origin. And I would say that this supports our hypothesis that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. As per the test we did by calculating in the first calculated tables, the second graph where we showed the curve pressure versus volume, and then this. I'd say it's all shaping up to say that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. And that's what Boyle's Law says. For a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature, the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So this supports that. I hope you found that helpful and uh, good luck if you're doing the analysis yourself.